Hello friends, this is the second video of the topic sexual reproduction in organisms. In this video, we will be learning about sexual reproduction in plants. This video comprises of three portions. The first portion that we will be learning today is structure of flower. It is a very important topic as compared as we in context to the NCRT syllabus. The question that is usually asked on this topic is explain the detailed structure of flower. Now first we learn about what is a flower. So flower is a modified shoot. Now everyone knows what a shoot is. Modified shoot because it comprises of four whorls. Whorls means the layers that are present in a flower. So if, if we see the flower, I can see the four major whorls. The first whorl, if I say, is the sepals. Have you seen any sort of flower? We can refer to a hibiscus flower. We can have seen a rose flower. There are different sorts of flowers that are available. Now, the sepals are those green colored leaves. If you have seen a rose bud, in that rose bud, the distinct portion, this green leaves that cover the bud of a rose, these are referred to as sepals. These sepals protect the flower in the case of bud. When it is in a state of bud formation, it, these sepals protect the flower in the form of bud. Now these sepals are attached to a swollen base. This swollen base is called as thalamus. The thalamus is attached to a stalk of a flower. The stick of that flower is referred to as the pedicel. Now these sepals is the non-accessory world. That is it is not important for sexual reproduction but it is a part of flower. The second one is the petals. Group of petals is called as corolla. Now what are these petals? The brightly colored part of a flower which is responsible to attract the insects for pollination is called as petals. It is basically the ones which beautify a flower. Why we see a flower in the beautiful form is because of these brightly colored petals. The third one is the androsium and the fourth one is the gynosium. Now one by one we will discuss every whorl in detail. The first one, the sepals. Just now I told you the green colored leaves that are present in a flower which protects the bud in the in a state of bud is called as the sepals. The second one is the petals. Group of petals is called as corolla. They are brightly colored because they have to attract the insects for pollination. Now why are these insects responsible or why are they uh, essential for the flower? Because every flower needs to reproduce. Now how is the flower reproducing? We learn that again in sexual reproduction that the flowers need to reproduce and they reproduce it sexually. For that they require these insects to carry over their pollen grains. The process or transfer of pollen grains is called as pollination. This would we will study in the next video. Then the next one is the androsium. Androesium is the male reproductive part of a flower. The male reproductive part then comprises of anther and filament. The anther is the swollen up and the filament is the stalk that is attached to this anther. Now if I draw a section of it, I cut it in two equal parts and see it under a microscope, I could see the distinct structures. The first one is this pollen sac. Now this sac word refers to a bag. Any sort of bag we can call as a sac, a bora. Bore ke andar humne kya rakha hai? Kyunki humne isko bola pollen sac. So that sac would contain what? Pollen grains. These pollen grains containing structure is called as anther. Now what is this pollen grain? Very very important part for any flower because this is responsible for it to carry out the process of reproduction. So pollen grain is the male gamete of any flower which would be carried by the insects or by any other agent to any other flower for the process of reproduction. Now the third last one is the gynosium. Gynosium is the female part. See wherever we see this word gyno. So wherever have you seen this word gyno or gynic refers to the female part. So gynosium is the female part of any plant or any flower. This comprises of 
stigma style ovary now the stigma is the receptacle part where this pollen grain would come and attach over this stigma now once the pollen grain comes and attaches over it it would lead down in the form of a tube this tube would move into a structure called as style and further the style carrying the pollen grain or the male gamete would move into the ovary the ovary is the female reproductive part which carries ovules these ovules are the female gametes which would help or which would fuse with the male gamete in the process of sexual reproduction to form a zygote so the complete structure that is sepals petals and rhosium and gynoecium comprise together or combine together to form a flower now any flower which contains all these three four structures that is sepals petals and rhosium gynoecium is referred to as a complete flower we call this flower as a complete flower because it has all the four major whorls the flower which contains sepals petals and androecium is called as a male flower the ones which contain sepals petals and gynoecium is called as a female flower now either a flower is male or a flower is female if it is a male flower it is an incomplete flower if it is a female flower again it is referred to as a incomplete flower but if it comprises of all four it is called as complete flower complete flower is also referred to as bisexual why bisexual because it has both male as well as female reproductive part the ones which contain both androecium and gynoecium are called as hermaphrodites again one word question is asked on this definition what are hermaphrodites so hermaphrodites are the bisexual flowers which contains both androecium as well as gynoecium and it forms the complete flower male flowers which contains only androecium female flowers which contains only gynoecium so these were the terminologies that was referred to the structure of flower in the next video we will learn about this process of pollination and the different agents responsible for pollination